Welcome everyone to the first installment of our Salesforce CRM training. I am Carl O'Brien Ybar with the FAS Salesforce team. Today we are going to be covering the general overview of what is CRM. We're going to talk a little bit about the theory behind the system as well as discuss some similar mechanisms and, and similar ideas that you experience in your everyday life that will help give you a bit of a, a better understanding of the application of some of the strategies that we're looking to support with our usage of Salesforce. Then we'll, we'll move into discussion about how we use the Salesforce system here at GSA, we'll talk about some of the benefits that you'll see from that, as well as talking about some of the reasons that CRM systems and CRM implementations fail historically and some of the ways that we can get around some of those pitfalls falls that others have fallen into. Then we'll top that off with a brief discussion about some of the most important and most frequently used terms within the Salesforce environment. Uh, and again, top that off with a, a brief discussion of uh, some of the benefits that you guys will see as you start investigating and start getting into more of the specifics of the system itself. Again, today we really are just covering basic theory about this system. We're not going to do uh, any walkthroughs of the system or anything like that. This really is geared towards helping beginners or novice users of, of CRM and of Salesforce understand what this is all about and understand some of the things that, that you'll experience when you're using the system. So as we move forward, one of the, the major things that you're going to see and one of the major themes of CRMs and, and of Salesforce is the idea of taking the massive amount of information that we have at our, at our disposal as an organization and finding a centralized location for all of that data to be stored as well as give us the ability to cross-reference that information to analyze, measure, and report on that information. So at the end of the day, with that ability, what we're able to create is a full spectrum view of what's actually happening with that customer. And not only from the level of a, a very high level look at what's happening with our different organizations and the millions and sometimes billions of dollars of business that, that we're doing out there with our customers, but also down to the very granular level of what's happening with individuals and being able to look at the specific interactions and emails, phone calls, meetings, and things like that that we have historically engaged with with those customers and really everything in between, okay? So <clears throat> at the end of the day, regardless of what your strategy is and what you're looking to accomplish with Salesforce, 99.99% .99 of all that stuff is going to be there for you. And I would encourage you as you start getting into you know, working with, with some of your more specific goals and strategies um, to reach out and, and we can talk about how to accomplish some of that stuff. So there is an old Greek proverb that I think encapsulates this idea of CRM very nicely, and, and that is, a society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. So one of the, the main themes of a system like Salesforce is the idea that the information that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis becomes the information that we end up making our decisions from in the future, okay? So as we move forward, the better information that you put into the system on a day-to-day -day basis, the better information that we're going to have to make our decisions from in the future. So as you work with the system, remember that the information that you're working with isn't limited to just you. There's a lot of other people out there benefiting from the work that you're doing as well. So make sure that, that you're putting in complete information that you're putting your best foot forward with this system because again it, it's not just about you it's also about what you bring to the table for the rest of the team now what I'd like to talk about are a couple of real-world examples of data analytics that actually serve to benefit our lives 
every single day. One of the greatest benefits in terms of just our modern society is the idea of modern medicine and the idea of communicable disease and how bacteria and viruses and things like that work. And so even up until about 160 years ago into the 1850s, there was an idea that sickness was caused by a lot of kind of strange things. And and one of those things was referred to as miasma or bad air, um, which was causing illness in society. Now, of course, we know that that is obviously untrue. And we actually have someone to thank for that by the name of Jon Snow, who um, in the 1850s in London took, took it upon himself to do some research into cholera, into trying to understand what the, the cause of this illness that affected so many people throughout the world. So what he did is actually plotted on a map the locations of people who got sick, where they lived, and where they got their water from. And by analyzing those outcomes and tracking the illness back to its source, Jon Snow was actually able to identify a specific pump, the Broad Street Pump, located next to uh, basically a a leaking cesspit that was infected this water that was contaminating this water and making all of these people sick and by doing so also uncovered this larger idea this larger causation of this illness and by spreading that information really helped millions of people improve their lives moving from medicine to the example of law enforcement all of us who live really in, in any major metropolitan area benefit from a law enforcement strategy that was pioneered in New York City in the 80s when when there was really a real problem with crime and especially with the homicide rate in, in New York. And so what the NYPD decided to do, employ a strategy called CompStat, uh, which basically called for analyzing the crime that was happening in the city and using Using the information based on you know, location, time, types of crimes, things like that, and using that information to make a decision to where to allocate their resources. Okay, so um, rather than you know, putting a cop on every corner, uh, we can put cops on the right corners to stop the crime. And so the first year after they rolled out this strategy, they saw a reduction of 25% in that homicide rate, and over the next eight years, an additional 60% reduction, which is an incredible feat, and especially when you consider the amount of uh, of lives saved. And if we consider the larger implications of that, you know, we are taking this this law enforcement strategy, and after that success was shown in New York, we then employed it in many other metropolitan areas, and now sitting in the middle of of the the 2010s, we we are in one of the safest times that we've ever lived as violent crime and homicide has continuously decreased due to strategies like this. So if we take the example of these strategies and sort of translate that over to our usage, what what we're looking to do, again, is to understand what our outcomes are for our different strategies, understand what we can do to um, strengthen our weaknesses, and understand what we can do to to play to our strengths. And so we can take um, some of these less than desirable outcomes or you know negative outcomes and try to understand what the reason behind those outcomes are and see what we can do to 
to either mitigate or to you know to get around those hurdles so that we can change those outcomes right it's all about understanding what's happening right understanding what the what the the reason behind those outcomes are and crafting a strategy that will lead to more positive outcomes regardless of what that means if that means you know closing more business if that means closing more cases if that means generating more leads you know it, it could be anything it's all about figuring out based on your goals and your strategies what your most efficient most intelligent route to success will be now taking a, a bit of a more fun example and some uh, something that we will all be familiar with um, is the idea of professional athletes crafting a strategy to help them win so whether that be an individual athlete uh, you know a, a boxer or a runner or a swimmer creating a, a plan of attack for a particular course or whether that be a, a team looking to craft a strategy on how to beat the team that they're coming up against the idea is simply to understand your best assets your best strengths and look to play to those and understand what your weaknesses are and look to to mitigate those weaknesses so um, one of my favorite examples are the San Antonio Spurs when they came up against Shaquille O'Neal when he was playing with the Lakers um, and when he was by by all rights the most dominant player in the league so what Popovich and what the Spurs did is basically put a man into the game specifically Specifically to foul and foul and foul Shaq and force again the most dominant player of his time to make his points through the one avenue where he was absolutely a non-dominant factor in the game and that was from the free throw line anybody who saw Shaquille O'Neal play can tell you that it was absolutely a non-beautiful sight so so by, by employing a very specific strategy, the Spurs were able to contain this very powerful, effective player and force, force this player away from his strengths and force him to play in the weakest possible position. Um, now, uh, of course, for the Spurs, that is taking the biggest threat to their success, which is this dominant player, and, and forcing a strategy upon the game that really uh, mitigates that the strength uh, of that player so crafting a strategy that that leads us to a higher level or a higher percentage of success so Again, taking that over to uh, our purposes, we're not necessarily tracking, you know, the, the field goals that we're taking or the pitches that we're throwing or the times that we're running or anything like that. But we are tracking, you know, the, the stuff that we're doing, right? So if we take it from a, on a one-to-one -one basis, we as individuals are out there interacting with other individuals in our client organizations. So we're having phone calls and exchanging emails and having meetings meetings and sending proposals and we're communicating and we're interacting with those different people. Those are all things that we want to make sure that are getting into the system that we're creating records as we're going through. But there are also things that happen on a more one to many basis, right? So we have our different uh, mass emails and marketing and conferences and expos that, that we facilitate, our customer trainings that, that we put out. These are all things that one or a few people from our side um, are, are distributing information to a large number of people from that customer side and looking to, again, you know, interact with those folks and influence those folks in some way to give them information, to get them to do stuff, what, whatever the case may be. Three and four dovetail a little bit, but it really is about, you know, getting an understanding of, of the types of messages coming from our customers, what types of, you know, what types of interactions we're getting from them from our call center, what types of messages we're getting from them on our social media side, what types of cases 
cases and issues are are they logging and can we glean some good information from that in order again to make more intelligent better informed decisions about how we move forward the answer to that absolutely is yes it's just a matter of what questions are we asking and what information do we need to draw back to answer those questions last but not least on here is the idea of our business intelligence systems of which we have many and in which we have a considerable amount of information that it would take a considerable amount of time for any individual or a group of individuals to actually go through and, and analyze. So what we're looking to do is integrate those systems with our Salesforce system in order to automate the analysis of that information and in order to identify some of that low-hanging fruit, whatever that may be. Again, depending on our strategies and our goals for our different you know, teams and regions and portfolios, the low-hanging fruit might be different things. It's not always going to be sales. It's not, you know, it's not always going to be cases or issues. It's not always going to be anything um, again because you know we have such a, a complex organization with a, a great number of, of different teams looking to accomplish different things so the the most convenient example for me to give as we go through is of course the the example of sales but Salesforce in our context is absolutely not limited to just sales there's a lot of other important stuff going on so when you're using Salesforce, what it really boils down to is getting information into the system. As you're having phone calls, meetings, emails, stuff like that, log those into the system. As you have things get scheduled for the future, you're going to have you know, follow-up meetings or you're supposed to follow up with somebody you know, in a couple weeks or give them an email or something like that. Get that stuff into the system today. You can preload things that you're supposed to do in the future and then the system system will remind you about that. Um, as we go through in the next couple of training sessions, I will show you very specifically how to create those tasks and how to create the records of that stuff um, so that it's very easy for you. Um, but I just want to sort of prep that idea in your mind is preload stuff whenever possible. Get it into the system as quickly as possible and that way you won't forget about it. Same goes for the new people that you're meeting. Um, by and large, the, the people that you're interacting with and the organizations that they belong to, those records are all going to already be in the system for the most part. Um, so every now and then when you come across something that isn't in the system, again, just get it in there, whether that be a new person or maybe you need to update some information or something like that. It's all about getting that information into the system so that we can benefit from it. Same goes for your lead conversions, your sales opportunities. Um, lead management is going to be the second session, so the, the next one after this. Opportunity management is the third session, so the second, um, the, the one after leads. And so for those of you who are interested, you can uh, find lots of more good information there. And, but, you know, as we said, it, it's basically just about getting your information into the system. When you do that, you will also see that you will benefit from other information that other people are putting into the system. We talked about that briefly a few minutes ago, and again, as we go through, you will see more and more how that happens. As trite as it sounds, you cannot benefit from information that isn't in the system because there's no way for you to view that. The other really great thing about the system is that it, it is much more intelligent and much more efficient than using Google Docs, a Word doc, a whiteboard, a you know a Franklin Covey planner. It, it encapsulates all of the things that you need. It has email function, it has calendar function, um, it has task reminders, it has everything that you need. So um, the, the, the more that you get into the system and use it on a day-to-day -day basis, the more comfortable that you will be with it and, and the better that it will serve you.
So as we go through, you will see that that the information that we talk about is really going to end up being like building blocks, right? That we're, we're going to talk about lead management, then we're going to talk about opportunity management, and you will see how these processes dovetail into each other and how, how, and how each process informs the next, okay? So as we go through, you're going to learn how to work with this system and you will learn different functions that will translate all the way around the Salesforce system. So as you work with your activities in the lead process, it'll be the same exact way that you interact with your activities in the opportunity process and the case process and, and, and so on. Um, so the more that you learn um, in terms of just basic usage of the system, the better equipped you will be to work with all of the other parts of the system because it, there really is a lot of stuff that, that, that's transferable. The other thing that you're going to see, again, is is more specifically how the the different processes that you know again lead management, opportunity management, things like that, um, how they have their own portion, they have their own silo, but how again they, that those pieces of information do flow into each other, and you can analyze the pipeline of where uh, of where things are flowing through and how they're converting and what percentage of that business is coming through. There's a lot of really interesting information there. The other thing that, that you will have available to you, and this is something that, that I will continue to to talk about, because it's one of those things where after you get it, you look back and go, oh, that's really easy. But sometimes, you know, understanding the relationships between this data is sometimes a little tricky. So um, for those of you who get it quickly, you will forgive me for, for repeating it a couple times, because it, it is important, and it is something that I want to be sure that that everyone understands um, and and the idea is that the data that you put into the system will aggregate and it will grow on itself um, so as I today put in a record of a phone call or a meeting that I have if I fast forward to 2020 all all of the information that I put in today and between now and then will all be in the system available for me so I will have a complete historical record of everything that's happened between now and then and so in August of 2020 that I want to look back and see you know what conversations I've had in 2017 or what business I did in 2016 or what cases we had in 2015 or all of the above all of that information is going to be available to me the other really cool thing that you have available to you is is the ability to to calculate an aggregated monetary value um, for different folks. For those of you who are more interested in, in that sales uh, type application, you can look and see how much business a particular customer or group of customers have done with you. Um, you can also see, for, for those of you who are interested in, type, in, in cultivating this type of business, it, what types of referrals or introductions that you've gotten from different people. So not only calculating you know the the specific business that they've that they've done with you or the specific transactions that they've done with you but also the you know some of the periphery that you might not have taken into consideration so it, it gives you a, a bit of a, a, a different way of looking at information it gives you a more detailed look a, a bit of a different angle um, so that you can get some interesting things out of there a couple of things that I want to just caution you about and, and some pitfalls that I want to help you avoid. Um, I, I've been doing this type of work for a long time with several different organizations in several different industries, and these issues are ones that everyone falls into, right? Regardless of industry, regardless of experience, regardless of application, the, these are things that everyone has trouble with. So um, the first is simply an, an unfocused approach. Um, for those of you who have had any opportunity to get in and, and look at the Salesforce system, the thing that's probably going to strike you most quickly is the 
overwhelming amount of information in the system. And and not only from from a standpoint of, oh, we have a whole bunch of leads or a whole bunch of opportunities or uh, a whole bunch of contacts or things like that, but simply the fact that we have the most detailed, most complex version of Salesforce. That means that we have a lot of tools at our disposal. So imagine if you just walk into a tool shed and you don't really know what tool you're looking for, you're not really sure what uh, project you're trying to accomplish. It, it's a very daunting task to, to go in because you're not really sure where to start or what to look at or what you know what you even want to do. So the first thing that I would encourage you to do is really get a good understanding of what your goals are for using the system. And when you're using the system to begin with, focus on the portions that are going to make you successful. If you need to work with leads, work with leads. If you need to work with opportunities, work with opportunities. Don't worry about the other portions at the beginning. Come in learn what you need to learn and by doing so you're going to learn some of those transferable skills because remember a lot of what happens in Salesforce is is mimicked in other portions of, of the system but again we do have a lot uh, lots of different tools that do different things so first get comfortable with what makes you successful make sure you understand that and then start looking at some of the other stuff. Okay, um, that should really help you hammer down on on the portions again that are going to make you successful, and by doing so, will lessen the amount of frustration that you might feel with learning this new tool. Right, um, because there's so much available to you. If you spend a lot of time learning something that doesn't help you, that that frustration um, will will linger longer than you want it to, make it a bit more difficult to pick this stuff up. The other thing that I would encourage you to do is simply use the system as consistently as possible. Um, I say on a day-to-day -day basis, and I know that's not always you know, a hundred percent going to happen for everybody, um, but the reality of the situation is that if you're in the system on a daily basis, you, you have a greater probability of getting more useful information into the system. Okay, um, If you're only in the system once a week or something like that, the stuff that you do, let's say that you go in every Friday and that you put in your stuff you know, throughout the week, the little phone calls and the little emails and stuff like that that you, that you send or, or that, you, that you participate in, a lot of that stuff's going to slip your mind, and they might be short. But you know, those short, those short phone calls or those short communications um, sometimes do have very valuable information. So you want to be sure that you know, whenever possible to take note of that. And, and again, one of the things that I will help you do um, as we move forward is is show you the most efficient ways of operating Salesforce so that you're not spending a whole bunch of time you know, searching for the right place to put things and oh how do I do this or how do I do that um, I really want to make sure that, you, that you're effective and efficient with using the system um, and that you know, takes us to skipping over number three for the moment to number four um, is the idea of simply lack of training which um, my pleasure to you is that I won't allow that to happen for, for anyone who is you know, willing and, and able to, to take the training. I have made um, all of these available for you on demand. Um, and of course, for anyone hearing this, you know, if, if you want to um, send me an email, give me a call, um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have or do uh, you know, live, live trainings. Um, 
as they're requested. I want to make sure absolutely that you know how the system works, you know what's expected of you, you know exactly how to accomplish everything that you need to accomplish to be successful. Um, and to that end, the other idea is simply, a, the, the, the last one here, is the idea of a lack of measures and a lack of success indicators. Um, in, in order to achieve success, there has to be some sort of benchmark, um, and so we, we have four for the, for the different uh, portions of the system um, have identified some, some of the more important measures and metrics that we need to hit. So as we go through, I'll be sure to uh, make sure that you're aware of those. So as we go through the system, you're going to hear continuously, and you've probably already heard me a couple times throughout this session, talk about uh, leads, contacts, accounts, opportunities. These are going to be the most commonly used terms um, throughout our Salesforce environment. Uh, and the thing that I need you to, to understand is that they also represent very specific portions of the system, very specific records that, that contain um, you know, silos of information. Um, so when we're talking about our leads and our contacts, we're talking about people, right? So if you were looking for my phone number, my email address, my, you know, my ad, my physical address, whatever, whatever information related to me as a person, you would go to my lead or contact record. Um, so the other really cool thing, uh, as we've discussed a couple times, is that the records related to those people, the interactions that you've had with those people, phone calls, emails, stuff like that, um, anything that, that you've entered into the system uh, related to those people will maintain and will aggregate with that record um, as you move forward. Uh, moving one level of magnitude up from there, we have our accounts, which represent our organizations. So all of our people out there that we're working with, they are all related to an organization. And again, our organizations are represented by the account record in Salesforce. So similar to the way that the people record works, uh, your uh, account record is going to have the main information about that organization. So so the main contact, the main fax, the main headquarter um, address, uh, stuff like that. Um, and similarly to the people record, but again, on sort of one level of magnitude higher, um, the account record is going to aggregate all of the information related to that organization. So not only the activities, the interactions, emails, calls, meetings, stuff like that, but also the people related to that organization, the leads and the contacts, as well as um, some of the, the periphery uh, records like the opportunities and cases and, and issues and things like that. Um, so when when you're going through, just remember that when, when you're looking for information, you can look at it from a couple of different ways. Um, you can look for different people that you're working with. If you're looking for you know records of interactions that you've had with someone, then you can look at their at their record again and see that that historical record of the different interactions that you've had. If you're looking to, to go one level higher and you're looking to see all of the conversations that have happened with the people in that organization, you can go directly to that account record and, and, and see that there. So hopefully this will serve to shed some light on the interconnectedness and, and the ability to cross-reference information. So we've talked about a couple of these, but I just want to highlight some of the most important benefits that you're going to see from this. Um, one of the things, it, and ironically, uh, one of the greatest benefits that, that you will quote-unquote see from 
the Salesforce system is something that you're actually not going to pay that much attention to uh, because the, the purpose of our Salesforce system in a lot of cases is to take away information that is not readily important to you uh, and to deliver to you information that is actionable, right? The information that, that is timely and, and important to you. Um, and so one of the ways that we do that uh, is to is to automate our, especially our lead process, but again, to set up the system in such a way that it will automatically deliver to you actionable intelligence. The other really cool thing is our ability to report on information out of our Salesforce environment. Um, and you will have at your disposal many different reports as well as dashboards that give you the ability to drill down into information and, and give you um, very interesting uh, ways to segment and to view and to analyze uh, this information um, in, in ways that might not have been uh, available to you before and definitely weren't available to you if you were just using you know your little Franklin Covey or, or whiteboard stuff. The other thing that you will see, and, and the, really the most important thing, is an overall increase in the ROI on whatever time that you spend within this system. Okay, That everything that we're doing is designed to make your usage of the system more efficient, uh, as well as you deliver actionable intelligence to you as a user. And I, I know that sounds sounds vague right now, but as we go through and we talk more about our leads and we talk more about our opportunities and we talk more about um, the types of support given to you by the Salesforce tool, um, you will see much more specifically um, how this system is benefiting you. So for now, um, uh, I'm going to leave you with a, a bit of a teaser and just say that there are a lot of great things that this system does. Um, and so I hope that you will join me for our, uh, our next training sessions. Um, our next one, as we talked about, will be our lead management, followed by our opportunity management um, which dovetails into our AAS facilitation management for those of you um, who, uh, who need to have that information and then rounding out with our case management for customer issues. Um, so again, if for any of you who need some additional information or would like to ask any questions or anything, um, please feel free to, to reach out uh, through email. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. And uh, I thank you for your time and hope that you will uh, continue on and take some of our additional courses. So uh, thank you very much.